if somebody said the things that these people say mm. in my presence, I would knock them out. <laughs> um, I mean, I have seen comments on some of your videos. That's gonna be the code intro. I'm just gonna have. Oh, that. that's oh, fine. A hundred percent. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. I am joined here today by John Keel. How are you, sir? Very well. Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, so it's, so it's been a year. It has been a year since the last time I, you and I shot together. That is crazy. It, it went very quickly. Yeah. 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 So how have you been? Felt like months. Um, fantastic. Fantastic. I mean, obviously, we, we speak a lot, we talk a lot, yes. we see each other. Yes. Um, but things are great. I mean, uh, I guess I should really kind of introduce if, if you didn't if you guys right. didn't see that video I think I think back then you had far less subscribers than you do now right right and, yeah. and so yeah so there's we probably some really, new people we didn't really know each other no it was more of a trust through friends that you yeah. agreed yeah, yeah, to yeah. Uh, to want me on the show yeah <laughs> <laughs> but you've been invaluable because of your knowledge of the industry you're an industry veteran yeah um, yeah I joined the industry in 1999 Right, and you were primarily high end, and then you went micro brands. Correct. I was high end all the way up till two thousand sixteen, uh -huh. um, two thousand seventeen, which I still do work in the high end side of the industry. Right. Um, but somewhere around two thousand fifteen, I started falling in love with micro brands. So I thought it was very, very poignant to bring a space on the internet where yeah. people can go and. And, and kind of do research or even find brands that were curated. Mm -hmm. Because there's so many micro brands coming out there, there's hundreds and hundreds. Yeah. The majority of them are garbage. Right. I shouldn't say the majority. A good portion of A them good portion. are garbage. No, I, I, you know, I have to agree. I mean, I've, I, there seems to be, I get emails every day. It's like everybody's starting a watch. And, and sending watches to you to review yeah. and this, and you get them, you see them. This isn't a knock to anybody in particular, but there are a lot of people who, who start a micro brand because they're because of crowdfunding or somebody's got money to put into it and they don't have knowledge, they don't have experience and, and they don't know the difference between the movements and, and things like that. So I felt from from my standpoint as a micro brand enthusiast, while I was still in the high end, but yeah. as a micro brand enthusiast, it was very confusing looking at all these different brands, all these different sites and trying to figure out which ones were good, which ones were not, which ones were well made, yeah. uh, which ones had great designs. And, and it kind of occurred to me that, yeah, I have experience in the industry. Mm. I have experience holding and working with fantastic brands. And if I could take that knowledge and experience, kind of examine the micro brands that I'm attracted to and then bring them to a marketplace mm. that says, look, if you're looking for a micro brand and and you're on this site, it's it's worth looking at. And that's yeah. how you got me into NTH. Correct, and with, then, with old Naki. And, and Naki, yeah, old Naki. <laughs> and then we did the collaboration with Chris Vale. Yeah, so that's... Uh, which we'll be doing the raffle. I think we're gonna do it live in the Facebook group. Today. Live in the Facebook group, and this video will go out whenever I can find Right, so by the time you guys see this video, the, yeah. the raffle for the three prototypes will right, have already one. been announced yeah yeah um i, I have to say I, I i wore it in the previous video to this oh you did and oh, i loved it all I, right I, i'm so happy yeah it's the 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 catalina came out phenomenally a lot less busy than i anticipated it would be because right. when you're looking at a rendering of it that's yeah it's a whole different thing on your computer yeah it's yeah. way different than when you see it at 40 millimeters on your wrist yeah, correct absolutely actually talking about what's on the wrist we oh. should do wristwatch you're wearing two. You I are right. Schwarzkopf. I'm not one of those guys. I, I don't often Schwarzkopf. Right. On the same token, I believe it or not, yeah. I take my watches off all day yeah. because I'll walk into my office, I'll be doing something, and I'll have to go and let's say pack up some things, and I'll take my watch off and I'll go do something physical. I'll mm -hmm. come back, and if you guys have ever seen any of my videos or posts or whatever, I have. I usually have. Four. Oh, I'll, I'll leave a link down below, guys. So do check out John's yes, channel, please. But I usually have four or five or six or seven watches either on my desk or on mm -hmm. my side desk. So I'll pick up a different watch and I'll wear that, and I'll pick up another and I'll wear that, and and you know so. A lot of times during the day, I don't have one on because I'm doing other things. Right. Right. So, so today I was really torn between whether I wanted to wear my Stratton, Stratton, or my Omega. Oh man, that, so, that is nice. I didn't know you had that. Yeah. So, it is a pretty special story. This uh, this watch was actually a gift mm -hmm. from a good friend of mine who uh, who worked for Omega for quite a long time. He was getting another position in the watch industry. He and I were having a long conversation. To, I called to congratulate him on the new position, 
and he said, hey, I'm going to send you something. Mm. And I, I didn't know what it was. He wouldn't tell me. Mm. And long story short, it was a Omega Speedmaster 40th anniversary Gemini uh, oh, from 2005. Very nice. And and the the bezel's blue as well. The bezel's blue, the dial's blue, the subdials are silver. It's supposed to look like uh, the, the, the sky with the moon or other right, celestial right, beings. Right. Case back uh, oh, is it art. an exhibition? It's a painted exhibition. On the inside of the crystal, it's actually painted. I'll show you in okay, a bit, yeah, and I've you guys will see, see it. Yeah. I've got to see that. Yeah, so, so it's a very special watch to me. As a matter of fact, I have a handful of watches that I don't get to wear often. And, and today, I just really wanted to wear this. It's uh, gorgeous. It is it's gorgeous. gorgeous. And, and the funny thing is the value. Um, you know, I, I would never sell this. Yeah. You know, this, this, this will only get sold if I have to feed my children. Right. Um, but I often would look on the internet and say, just to see, oh, what are they selling for? Yeah. And they were always three or four thousand dollars. And for some reason, about a half a year ago, I looked, and they're going for between eight and twelve. Wow. I mean, the prices. So it's, it's, I presume it's like a limited edition. It is. Right? Yeah, yeah. I want to say two thousand five pieces. I know. Justifiably so. It's gorgeous. Well, I also think that because it was in two thousand five. Right. It's is not it something that's been in retail stores over the last year or two or three. So it was the anniversary of Ge the Gemini? The 40th anniversary of the first spacewalk. Right. Right. Got it. Yeah. Cool. So it's cool. uh, it is a special piece, obviously for what it is, but also more so because it's very sentimental to me yeah. because it was given to me by a friend who I made through the watch industry. So tell me about on the other wrist. So this is Stratton. Right. Oh, uh, you, Kyle. Yeah, shout out to Kyle. Yeah, yeah, Kyle is a good friend of both of ours. Yeah. Independently, uh, we both knew Kyle before we knew each other. Yes, which is um, a small world. So uh, Stratton to me is just a, a really one of the best designers in the micro brand space. I don't feel that they take a whole lot of cues from other brands per se. Whenever I see Kyle's designs, Instantly, I know it's a strap. I know sure. it's that's, his watch. That's you know? exactly my point. He yeah. has a very distinctive, his own take on racing watches. And, and they're very, you know, they're very color, colorful. Yeah. Uh, they've got, is that the automatic or the quartz? This is the quartz. This is the Mecca quartz. Right. But the, the Stratton is one of my favorite watches in my cases, mm. which is strange because I'm so drawn to dive watches. Right. Right. Yeah. Right, right. yeah so. um, and what are you wearing? Uh, a brightly navy toner. I've seen this before. Yeah, it's I, it's my three year anniversary of owning this next month in a couple uh -huh. of weeks. Are you guys gonna go out to dinner? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I I I get a lot of flack for like flipping and buying and flipping a lot, you know, which is part of the thing, right? The addiction. However, there are certain watches, probably my Squale, the SKX, which I have flipped a lot. Right. Um, and the navy timer. It's just one of those watches that I fell in love with it since the moment I put it on my wrist and that's it. It's yeah. an iconic design. It's yeah. a, The Navitimer to me is easily the, my favorite Breitling. Actually, I'm considering buying a vintage, the eight, 806, because I did a video, I, I reviewed okay. the, the new 38 millimeter right. new one. <laughs> and I like what Breitling are doing, but when I went through all the history of, of the early innovation and, and especially Leon Breitling and uh, how he pioneered chronographs. I mean, really, he was one of the first to make an actual chronograph into a wristwatch. Right. From a pocket watch to a wristwatch. Right. There's just so much history. It predates the Speedy. I mean, I used to go mad over yeah. Speedies, but ever since this, I haven't looked back. You know it's what's just... funny is is how your taste change over time, correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. What's really funny is I've never, and this is going, I know this is going to be heresy on your channel, I've right. never been into Seiko's. And oh, not, really? not for any other reason than I was never really exposed to them. A few years ago, our friend Mark from Long Island Watch, right, right. He, was, he was actually buying a, Uli, hey Mark, yeah. he was actually <laughs> buying a Ulysse Nardin from me. And he said, and he was telling me about his business. Is it first blue? Met. It is blue. I've seen it. Yeah, I that's, think I did a video. I ended it. up selling that to him. Oh, really? Yeah, back when I was in retail. Jesus, so it is a small world. What's funny is he was telling me the business he's in, how he's in the affordable space and so on and so forth. Yeah. And, and I said, that's just something, I mean, I when I got into the industry, it was like, feet running into the high end. Yeah. So I never had the exposure in the lower end side. Yeah. And he ended up bringing me a Seiko Monster, uh, second generation. Right. Now I know Now I know a little bit. I love that watch and I've, I've been wearing that since he's been wearing his Ulysse Nardin. Mm. But then recently, I picked up a Pogue. 
Oh. And, I, and I have to say, it's because of the Urban Gentry. It's because of the Ur Urban Gentry Facebook group. Right. You know, it, it's crazy how your tastes change yeah. and styles change. And that, That's another space. Go the, all the Pogue, this, correct. that, they've all been to space. Well, the Pogue that I got yeah. is actually a Japanese domestic market Pogue right. from, I want to say, 1967 or 1968. I know the date. I just don't remember exactly. You're going to have to send me a photo. So I, I will. I can share it. From what I understand, I may be wrong because yeah. I'm not an expert. Uh, is that it is one of the very first Japanese domestic market Seikos ever. Really? Yeah. So, Interesting. And this is just a little bit of research I've done, yeah. but it happened to have come across my desk, literally, yeah. for, in a local level. I had yeah. somebody come in and visit me and said, I have a few old Seikos, are mm. you interested? Mm. And I saw the Japanese day wheel. And I said, I'll take that one. Nice. Yeah, so, oh. and I, I had my watchmaker just kind of give it a, a, a movement cleaning and a couple yeah. of other things, but it is awesome. Nice. And it's crazy because it's because of the group and because of your right. channel and, and, and how your taste change. Yeah. Right? It, it, it is important, actually, talking of um, watches that we have evolved in and out of love with, we were going to talk about Rolex because we, we this is something that creeps up a lot. It is. Because you're not... Would you say you're a Rolex hater, or is that no, too strong? It's that's it is definitely too strong. Okay. I have an enormous amount of admiration, respect. I, I couldn't have more respect okay. and admiration for what Rolex is and what right. they've built. I just have never owned one in uh, my twenty okay. plus, right. you know, my almost twenty years in the industry. Yeah. I've never owned a Rolex. And why is that? Well, there's so so just to preface everybody, this yeah. this has been a conversation between yeah. <laughs> Tristano and I for a little while. Yeah. And I think it kind of blows your mind. Yeah, it does. I'm so, you guys know I'm a Rolex guy. I mean Right, of course. And I agree with everybody who is a Rolex guy. Yeah. So I kind of blew, I did a, a blog post a few years back. Yes, I read for, it. Yes. For Quill and Pad, that yeah. was the t the five reasons I've never owned a Rolex. And Can you that, remember what they are? I, I not probably not to a T, but I could tell you. Okay. Because it's still the same reasons why I've never owned a Rolex. Okay, just run it through really quickly for me. Number one is my indoctrination in the industry. My first job was with a brand that was a very small fish in a very big pond, uh -huh. and that big shark. Was, yeah, Rolex. It was Rolex. Right. So for me to, I worked for Chrono Swiss, which was uh, we made maybe four thousand watches a year. Yeah. And all of the stores, I was the I was the national sales manager. So all of the stores that I would go into, you'd have a big Rolex case, mm. and I'd have two feet of Chrono Swiss space with maybe right. eight or ten watches. My job was very quite literally to get the salespeople as well as clients to understand why they'd want to spend five or six or seven thousand dollars on a Chrono Swiss versus a Rolex. Yeah. So that was my first, the first thing was, I was taught in the industry before I had any real knowledge, mm. is that look, Rolex makes a million watches a year easy. It's, they call it the Texas Timex and all this bad stuff that the people on my side, you know, the smaller end side of the industry would tell me. Mm. So that's kind of my belief because when you start hearing these over and over and over from the people that you work with or, the forums you're in, you yeah. believe it. Yeah. So that was the first reason. I was actually trained and taught that these smaller brands are more special, which I don't disagree with, nor do I agree with at this mm. point. You know, everybody's got their place and I appreciate that. Uh, another reason is bracelet. The bracelet. The bracelet. Right. Not the Rolex bracelet, just the bracelet in general. I very, very, very rarely ever wear a bracelet watch. I find them ridiculously uncomfortable. This Speedy came on a bracelet, mm -hmm. okay? And if I and if I put the watch on a bracelet and I wear it, for sure within two hours it's on my desk and I won't touch it the rest of the day. I find them very uncomfortable. Interesting. I think I'm so used to wearing a strap, the comfort of it, the movement of it, mm -hmm. uh, the lightness of it. Yeah. So, and Rolex, especially up until a few years ago, you really couldn't wear, or no, nobody thought to wear a Rolex on a strap. Right. Now you have Everest making the rubber bands for right, them. Yeah. I've become a NATO I, freak. I, I know what you mean. I, I, I get flack for putting everything on a NATO. <sighs> but it's so comfortable, it's right. so practical it's and one of the, secure. It's you know? one of the first things I liked about you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm, I tease. Yeah, so it, to me it was just a bracelet turned me off. Yeah. And, and again, up until a few years ago, nobody was really putting Rolexes on straps. Right. Right. That's, Third reason. 
The third reason, oh, you know what? I always just felt like everybody had them. I felt like that everywhere you turned in the corporate world or anywhere that mm -hmm. you were in watch communities, everyone had them. Mm -hmm. I felt if I was at a watch event and we're in a circle of five people, four of them were wearing Rolexes. Mm -hmm. So to me, it made it feel a little less special. I, I can understand that. And yeah. I, you know, people look at me like, that's kind of crazy. But I spent so much time or in watch communities and around Rolexes that to me, they just felt a little bit less special. Yeah. Which again, I. I can't agree with or disagree with at okay. this point. But the biggest reason, I, I, one of the reasons in that blog was uh, there are a lot of fakes, but there's a lot of fakes of everything nowadays. Yeah, yeah that's and true. That, you know, when you see uh, somebody who you, mm, we'll edit that, I don't forget about it. Yeah. I was gonna just be really derogatory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What were you gonna say? Sure, I'll, so, Go on. when you see somebody who you know, and I'm not trying to, pigeonhole anybody okay. or put anybody down. This is when really you, bad, I'll let it out. No, it's when you see somebody you know for a fact can't afford a $9,000 Batman, wearing a Batman, it's fake. Yeah. Or it can be fake. Okay. It, to me, there's just so many Rolex fakes. Again, nowadays, yeah. I wrote this a few years That's ago. It's not bad, I, what's bad, it's true. It is true, yeah. it is true. I mean, it's it, to me, eight of the 10 Rolexes I see on the pedestrian street mm. are not real. Mm. To me, again, it made the brand a little less special. That was a turnoff. But the biggest reason in the world for me that I would not want a Rolex mm. was because of the Cyclops. I have a loathing yeah. for a Cyclops on a watch. But like we were saying the other day, you just tap it off and so, it's just glued on. Or I could have gotten a big, uh, a no date or a sea dweller. But aren't you lusting off a, a no date? Well, that's, that's, so that's the big twist of this whole story. Yeah. I think a big part of it is mm. because, partly because I'm getting older, mm. maybe I'm seeing the world a little differently, maybe mm. I'm not around those watch communities as much, mm. that I am desperately lusting over a no date. Right, interesting. Despe like to the point of, I find myself daydreaming of what pieces in my collection can I sell to fund a new no date. Wow. Right, so, okay. so this whole thing has a twist. Yeah. The one biggest point is that your taste change, your yeah. styles change, just yeah. like we talked about before getting into the Rolex thing. Yeah. I never saw myself lusting after a 40 year old Seiko, but now I see this watch and I'm like, this is the coolest watch ever. In my time in the industry, what I really love to see is people who change. Yeah. People who have a belief, oh, I will never wear that brand. And then, hey, guess what I bought? Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, my, yeah, my yeah. attorney, my attorney is a perfect example. Hated, hated Hublot. Mm. Hated you blow. Mm. Calls me up one day, he goes, Guess what I just bought? I go, oh, you blow. He goes, I love it. <laughs> so, I mean, there's one of my best friends who's my attorney. And right. and that's the fun part. And the other fun part is getting to break each other's chops about it. Okay. Yeah, so fair enough. I was gonna I was gonna present a whole case of defending Rolex and I was gonna talk about all their innovations, or, you know, their history. But to be honest, it, I don't even think it's worth I think we it. all know it. I, I, yeah, we all know it. Yeah. Uh, I could, I mean, there's uh, the oyster case and uh, what have we oh, got here? Water resistance. The... Yeah, the, the first automatically changing date, um, the first watchmaker to earn chronometer certification on a wristwatch, that was in 1910. Uh, what else have we got here? The, the first waterproof wristwatch, obviously with the Rolex Oyster. Uh, they're the 64th. Uh, most powerful global brand, and it's funny. No, you, 64? Yeah. I would have thought they would have been in the top 10. Well, there's a lot of brands. That's true. Yeah. And then we've got to mention the, the, the fact that, you know, there's such a solid, I mean, a real one. You know, they're solid. <laughs> like, they're almost as good as gold in terms of uh, investments. And, Absolutely. Um, and then there's so many rare models. I have to say, my biggest issue with Rolex, and you guys know this, is is I I don't like the flashy ones. My favorite watch is the Explorer. It's right. it's so understated. It's simple. It's the, the do it all watch. Right. It makes me think, why am I buying anything else? Why am I looking at anything? Else? And I always yeah. come back to it. You know. Right. It's it's funny because I talk to so many people in the watch and the shaft said I've never owned one. I just like to say that just to say, just to get a little conversation yeah. going. I've never owned one. I, I have to say that that point you brought up, and I see it all the time, it's like, I see these collections, and it's like six Rolexes, and then they'll have like the Speedmaster, or something a little di different, right? right. Um, it might be, I don't know, a Brightling Colt or something. Right. 
And, I'm, and I see the same collection again and again and again. Now on one level, I'm thinking, well, okay, it's a very safe collection, it's a safe bet. You know, I can see why you like Rolexes, but at, at, at the same time I'm thinking, it's a little bit boring. I, I feel like there's a lack of adventure when you go yeah. to, that, to that extreme. A, another friend of mine yeah. has nothing but Rolexes and he has to have at least 20 of them. He's He's got every iteration of the sub, whether it's the Hulk, the yeah. Kermit, every time there's a new model, which isn't very often, yeah. but he definitely has to have one. And, his, and to me that is, uh, too far boring, right? Because I think there's so much out there to offer. I, I agree, I agree. Yeah. Um, talking Rolex, before we were filming, uh, I was saying how I went to the, the opera and the, the sponsor of the event was Rolex. Right. And I wore my Bulova um, uh, Actra on the Space View. Right. And I wore it on a purple NATO strap to match because I had a purple velvet. I had my opera outfit, right? <laughs> or your pimp outfit. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. I'm teasing. Um, and I loved it, and I got so many compliments on that watch. And yeah. it was so unusual because I knew I could have worn my. I have a Aduma Piguet yeah. moon face. Very conservative. Very yeah. It's like the epitome of a dress watch. That's what you go you wear to an opera. But I. Sure. It, the thing is, you know, you got Langes there and every right. Rolex imaginable, sure. and it's like a lot of money. And I don't want to enter into that. I no. felt with my space view, nobody's ever seen it. It's modern, although it's got real heritage. It's a, an American legacy. Now story. you have the reissue of the space view, or do you have an original it's, from the sixties? No, it's I, I, unfortunately I. It's a um, new old stock parts okay. because okay. the vintage ones, and there's there's even um, space view snobs that are like, oh no 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 no, I know. No, 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 no. no, no this snobs have first listen. Snobs in every section of this industry. Right, right. And who look down on my Bulova, it's some kind of franken mongrel thing, right? <laughs> and it's not. I mean, it's oh. genuine parts. It's been lovingly put together by an expert. It's, right. for me, all intent and purposes, it's the real thing to me. Right? Sure. And it was $500, but it, it, it got so many conversations going. And, I, and then I re, we tell the story about the CIA using them and blah, 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 and how, they, how Bulova had to delay the the release date because they, it was the height of the Cold War, they didn't want the Soviets to get the technology, the tuning fork, and right. all this, the pre course all this, is such an amazing story. Right, I, honestly, that's a story that I have to look into because I'm not familiar with it. Right, right, well, I've, I've done videos on yeah. it, so. Yeah. Um, but it's it's interesting, it's different, and I felt so proud wearing it. Yeah. And I'm not there, you, you know, know, trying to, do you let's, know I mean? let's bring that back to the Rolex conversation. So for me, if I were to run into you yeah. at, let's say, a coffee shop or somewhere, yeah. Yeah. and you were wearing your Explorer, yeah. and I said, hello, sir, that's a beautiful Explorer. Chances are you'd say, thank you, and walk upon your way, right? right. If you were wearing that Navitimer, and I said, sir, that's a, that's a beautiful Navitimer, chances are you'd be much more apt to talk about your Navitimer. Yeah, I, I think so. Well, there is a lot of story with the. Explorer. Oh, I agree. I'm not saying it from that purpose. There's a right. lot of history, there's a lot of story, and there's a lot to tell. And let's assume it's not TGB. Let's assume you're a regular gentleman. I bring up the coffee thing because I was in Dunkin' Donuts probably two or three years ago, mm -hmm. and there was a gentleman there who had a Gerard Perigo. Right. And I said to him, I said, I love that GP. He and I actually sat down and talked watches for about right. 45 minutes. Yeah, 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 in yeah. my opinion, and I may be wrong, yeah. but in my opinion, if he was wearing a Submariner or a Presidential or anything else, yeah, he, chances are he would not have engaged in a watch absolutely. conversation. I, let, let's go back to that example then. If I was wearing my sub and not the Explorer, then that would right. probably happen. Right. You know. Yeah. My point being is that I, I always, again, I'm thinking years ago yeah. and why I never owned a Rolex and never why I, why I never wanted to own a Rolex yeah. is because to me I always felt like people who were wearing something a bit more different a bit more unique a bit more off the mm. mainstream path mm. would be more engaging people to speak with more of people that I would get along with possibly or at least have similar interests yeah. and and if you look at let's say the Bremont event we went to together we did that, oh, that yeah, get together yeah. vast amount of different types of people yeah who came to that actually did you meet that lady wearing a gp that world time i did yeah i did was I was, that, a, that I was, was absolutely shout out to you if you watch and, and i saw that watch literally from across the room yeah and i knew what it was a lot of times when i see somebody wearing a rolex it's because they had the ability to spend four or five or ten or fifteen thousand dollars on a watch mm. where they're a little bit less of into watches doesn't make them a bad person just doesn't make it 
the engagement that I look for when I see somebody who's wearing a, a Gerard Perigo yeah, World Timer yeah, or yeah. or an Accutron Space View or something of that nature. I always I always engage in great conversations with people due to watches. Yeah, actually drives my wife bananas because right. I'll talk to anybody <laughs> if they're wearing a cool right. watch. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The the lady was she was memorable because of her choice of watch. One hundred percent. And uh, you know it was impressive because then hearing her talk about it. You know, she was she was an, an, enamored with it, and it's Gerard Perigo. We've talked about Gerard Perigo many sure. times. Uh, it's an interesting brand, highly undervalued, and absolutely their, their achievements. Uh, they're still innovating. There is another element that we haven't really touched on. What's I don't that? think we've discussed. Is that um, do you ever notice in the news people only ever get robbed mostly? Oh. The thieves or the muggers, they, they actually know their watches. It's For really sure. disturbing. Yeah, well, especially nowadays. I think I think more than 10 years ago, like five, 10 years ago and before, everybody mm -hmm. would look for a Rolex on her wrist, especially if a tourist, yeah. and that's their mark. That's yeah. their target. But you're right. Thieves probably are becoming a whole lot more uh, sophisticated. Yeah. So when they see a, you know... A Patek. A Patek or a Hublot or a Frank Miller or whatever yeah. it may be, yeah. and know that it's worth a lot of money, they're yeah. going to rob them. I would have clients in the retail world where they'd come in and they'd buy a Tag Heuer or they'd buy something else for $1,000 or, or less money than their $20,000 Rolex. Right, so because right. when, when they went on business trips or trips, they would leave their Rolex at home because they didn't want to be a target. I have to ask you, while you're here, have you ever seen a replica that genuinely fooled you in the, in the yes. entire? Yes, absolutely. As time goes on, yeah. they're getting better and better and better right. and better. Uh, my first, the first one that really fooled me was a Panerai. Right, me too. Yeah, yeah. it was, yeah. it was, it was a dead, perfect not uh, replica. Also, I knew it because the reason I caught it, the reason I knew it is because I owned one that was very similar. I owned a Pam 76, which was a titanium hand wound piece with a sapphire crystal back. Right. The person who brought this fake in to try to sell it to our store yeah. was it was a stainless steel version of that. I forgot right. the reference number, and I'm I actually was looking at the back of his watch and I something wasn't right, and it turned out to be the um, the adjustment for the timekeeping. Mm -hmm. uh, it should have had a swan neck adjustment, and uh, it didn't. Right, right. Interesting. And, but other than that, it was a dead pen knockoff. I, I tell you, I um, I used to know a gentleman who collected real watches but also had a collection of replicas. I have a friend like that. And I couldn't I couldn't fathom why he would do that. And yeah. I happened to be wearing my Submariner, real my real ceramic sub. Right. While I was at his house and uh, there were, he had a green hulk, right? Right. Just if you didn't touch it, it was very convincing. Yeah. It's the, the the scale, the size. They even done the clasp. The what's it called? The uh, easy link. Adjustment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Everything. Slide lock. Slide, slide uh, glide lock. Glide lock. Thank you. Uh, it was, I mean, really, really yeah. impressive. However, I only picked up on it because I had my ceramic sub on my wrist, and when I had them both in my hands, the weight difference. No, the weight was almost perfect. Spot on. There was the feeling of the edges. Oh. There was something on my Rolex that it just felt more refined. Correct. In a lot of the knockoffs, you'll feel very sharp edges, especially under the lugs. Yeah. And along the bottom of the case, you'll feel a very, very sharp edge yeah. versus the original, you know, which will be really like silk. Right. Yeah. And and the, the thought I'd never experienced before had come across my mind of like, my God, like, I almost didn't want to wear my ceramic sub. I almost wanted to... You know, which I've never felt before. No, but that's that's it plays trick, you know, tricks on your mind. Yeah. Because all of a sudden you're thinking, well, gee, I could spend four hundred dollars on this great. Oh no, 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 no! I would uh, never, uh, never have. This. I know. No, no, I wouldn't either. Yeah. You know what's funny is is it's funny you bring that up about your friend because yeah. I have a very good friend of mine who, a lot of my clients from over the years have yeah. become very good friends. One of them is very wealthy and he buys a lot of watches. So he came in one day and he was wearing. Um, it was the Daytona with that ice blue dial and the right. brown bezel, the yeah, ceramic, yeah, yeah, yeah. really hard to get, yeah. especially when it when he had it. And I said, "Oh my Don, where did you get that?" And I yeah. said, "It's gorgeous, Bob. Who's you know whose list did you get on?" And he said, "No, it's, he takes it off." He goes, "What do you think?" I go, "Look at him." I, and he never takes it off. You know, I knew. I said, "Tell me, this is a knockoff." And he said, "Goes four hundred dollars." 
automatic mechanical chronograph ceramic bezel sapphire crystal maybe five hundred dollars just beautiful i mean everything that should have been yeah. and i said what are you doing wearing this because yeah. this this gentleman literally would spend three four five hundred thousand on a, on watches in a, in a year in a year oh in a year yeah on watches wow yeah so he's a very good client to have yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> I so can imagine right yeah so i said what are you doing wearing this he said yeah. oh I, he said i bought about 30 or 40 of them i gave them to a bunch of the guys that work for me and this you know, oh my God. I said, why are you buying this garbage? You know, the problem I have with that, if it's $500, like the blow of Axtron, right? What you can buy, it, precisely. A, a genuine Omega with a beautiful movement from before that's, swatch. That's my know? feeling. I would much prefer to have a, a vintage watch or a, yeah. a watch that retails for four or $500, some yeah. of the Seikos, or even a micro brand. Yeah, no. Yeah, one yeah, of the yeah. one of the things I fell in love with about micro brands is the design and the quality mm. at the price point, and and I can appreciate. It. I mean, I'm a huge fan of G-Shock, so I love watches from G-Shock all the way up to hundreds of thousands of dollars and everything in between. For me, I'd prefer to have a Stratton and an NTH and a Laurier and whatever else mm. than a knockoff. And I'm not a label guy. I don't wear belts and shoes, right. and, you know, right. that are label stuff. So I, I have to admit, you brought up a great point, the Laurier. Because that's like a micro brand that it gives me that vintage Rolex yeah. vibe, yeah. and yet it's still got its own identity. It's a micro brand. You I know? own one and I don't carry them. Right. You know, it's funny because I have a handful Which of micro. Yeah. I have the same one as you, but I have well, mine's gilt. Though. No, mine's not gilt. I have the black dial, non gilt. Ah, okay. Right. Yeah, I, I have to tell you, that's another pet peeve. I'll, I'll anger a lot of people. Yeah. I hate gilt. Really? It's crazy. It's crazy, and I not. When it's on your wrist, love it, beautiful. But just not for just you. Just for not for me. Right. Not for me. And it's it's funny. It's I, and we'll get a lot of comments on that comment yeah. too. But it's you know everybody's. No, I mean, but then it's your taste. But then ask me in five years. Yeah. Every watch I own might be gilt. Right. Right. You know that's again the beauty. So apart from the no date sub, mm -hmm. is there any Rolex? Which Rolex do you like the most, and which one do you least like? My favorite is the no date sub. Actually, preferably one from the 80s. Uh, drill bug holes. That's kind of my favorite. However, I love the ceramic bezel. So given the choice between a 1980s something sub with a sapphire crystal, you know, after the after they changed yeah. it to sapphire, but before they took away the drill bug holes, I like that. Right. Or I like the new version with the ceramic. Given the choice, I'd be pretty torn. Okay. I probably would end up one with one from the 80s. Which one do you least like? There are so many. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm teasing. Uh, anything that's really over the top, ostentatious. Do you know that? Uh, oh God, I've forgotten the name. It's like a, it's like got a leopard print. Yeah, it. that's that. That is the first thing. That, two watches came to mind when yeah. you asked which one. The leopard print Daytona. Yeah, yeah. And then they did that. I want to say, was it a Submariner, where they did all the colorful gemstones in it? Oh, Yacht was Master. That? It was Yacht, well, Yacht Master. Rainbow. I mean, yeah. yeah. Honestly, and I do not like flash. I don't like. Dime. I would never. I have to say something because I did a video of my top uh, five or seven watches I, I like the least, right? Okay. That Leopard Daytona oh. was in there. I tried to do it in the most respectful way, you know, not to offend. And I felt terrible because afterwards... Your, his manners are too good. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, afterwards, <laughs> somebody actually posted that watch on the Facebook and they were so pleased with it. And you know what? I felt terrible because on them, it looked great. It yeah. matched their style and, right. and you know, I would never in a million years, it's it's just not me, but on them it worked. Right. And I have to say, I liked it. Right. So I have, I have a hard time with the whole mass social thing, like social media with the yeah. groups and with the, and, and, and most likely with a lot of these comments because I think it should be fun. Yeah. I think if you were wearing a watch that I truly disliked, yeah. I should be able to break your chops. Okay. Right? And vice versa. And to me, it's it's enjoyable. If somebody's asking for opinion, then you give the opinion, they don't like the opinion, then all of a sudden they become keyboard cowboys and start calling you out. Yeah. Get over it. They're watches. Yeah. We're not talking about anything overly serious. This yeah. is a hobby, this is a passion, this oh, is fun. Yeah. Yeah. And, and to me, just like anything else in my life, I, I can't take myself too seriously and I, I wish most people around me didn't. Yeah the best, most fun conversations I have with my watch friends mm -hmm. is, you bought that? 
Right. Right? Yeah. And and getting back and forth. Six months later, I'm buying the same thing, and they're making fun of me. That's yeah. part of the fun. Yeah. When I was sitting here with my friend Jaime, yeah. who's a very active big watch collector, uh, he had this Invicta the, um, with a Popeye on the dial, right? Yeah. And uh, he, he said that he wore it when he went to, like, very snooty, because he's a theatre oh, actor. Absolutely. He wore it to remind himself not to take himself too seriously, and also to kind of like, uh, to make fun of the, his surroundings. Absolutely. And I just love that. And yeah. you know what? That night I was looking at Invictus uh -huh. with, with Popeyes on the dial. And, you uh -huh. know. I would, see, I would buy that watch every day of the week. Most people, I would never yeah. get into a group and deliberately bash somebody because of their taste or their style. Yeah. I would never yeah. deliberately insult people, nor do I think you would. No. It's just, to me, I feel like I was taught better. Yeah. Growing up, and it's just not my interest. Unfortunately, not everybody's like that. I didn't realize that. Yeah, I didn't realize that because, honest to goodness, I've only been on in social media for a year and a half now. Prior to that, if somebody said the things that these people say yeah. in my presence, I would knock them out. <laughs> so I mean, I have seen comments on some of your videos. That's gonna be the cold intro. I'm just gonna. Have oh, that. that's I'll fine. A hundred percent. I'm not an aggressive guy. <laughs> But if people talk to me to my face the yeah. way these people talk to each other, yeah. like, and naturally, I'm old. So I'm not used to this hiding behind a keyboard thing. Yeah. If you're gonna say something like that, I fully expect you to do it to my face. Yeah. No. So, but you're right, I, it, it's very new to me. That yeah. I've had to learn that, and I, I learned it help, with help from you. Right. Because you said to me, again, a year ago, you're gonna be on social media, people are gonna say things that are completely untrue, yeah. or you're not gonna like, and I have I don't I have I don't have close to as much hate coming at me as you do. <laughs> Thank God, and I hope I don't. Please don't start. Um, but the truth is, is, is because of again because of you, because of seeing how this social media world is. I don't take that stuff as seriously as I would have a year yeah. and a half ago. I had somebody on Instagram mm. who he was throwing um, uh, how do you say passive aggressive mm. stuff. And I was trying to be nice and converse with him, and yeah. it escalated on his end. And then I said, who is this clown? Yeah. Right? I mean, who is this guy I think he is? And I looked at his profile, yeah. and I don't want to offend anybody, but I might. Everyone was like him hugging and kissing a cat. <laughs> <laughs> and I have no issue if you love cats or love your cat. But I was like, ah. Oh. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> and I just, I literally let it go. He might be a super guy. Yeah. But what do you hate me for? You're halfway around the world and you don't know me. Yeah. You don't know what I do with my children and my wife and my friends and yeah. how I hold doors for people. And yeah. It, you can't hate somebody you don't know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There you go. How did we get onto talking about It doesn't this matter. This is, this is <laughs> from Rolex. This is life. what's fun. Yeah. This is what's fun. Absolutely. Talking about watches and life. And Should we do the raffle? Right, we're live. It says live. It says okay. live. All right, it says live. So guys, we're on the. This is Facebook, right? This is the yeah the UGWC right Facebook group live. Okay. Facebook so we're absolutely live. live right now. Okay. Right. And I have the uh, the randomizer there. Right. So so we announced uh, a few weeks ago. You yeah. announced in a video that we are going to be giving away three of the, the Catalina the prototypes. prototypes. Yeah. So we had a form filled out, right? There was a, a landing page yeah. where yeah. you can go and enter to win possibly one of the three Catalinas. Yeah. So to date, we got 4,349 entries, which we downloaded this morning, and I put them into a randomizer wheel online. Yeah. There we go. Right, There's so that's randomizer. here. So guys, if you could see this, that's the random. There's user. three thousand. I'm sorry, four thousand three hundred forty-nine emails entered into there, of the people who entered into win one of the protos. Right. So we are going to figure out a way to can look at this. Can you guys see that? I hope so. <laughs> this so, is the most awkward thing. It, it is, but it's fun, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. So Tristano, you're gonna hit the button there yeah. and then make that random wheel go. So how? Which button do I press? Let's see. Uh, also put the the arrow here. Oh, I'm sorry, the arrow here. In the center. I drag the arrow. Yeah. And just press in the center there. Oh. There, there we, we are. Go. So this there is the go. first winner of the prototype. Oh. Uh, uh, who is it? Oh. Can yeah. we get 
get that? I should turn that up. That's adtaylor87 at gmail.com. All right, so you... <laughs> there we go. All right, AD Taylor, you've got a Catalina prototype coming your way. So we have two more to give away. Yeah, two more. Sure, All right, so, so now, yeah. hit close, and then we're going to hit it again. Everybody's going, please be me, please be me. <laughs> Oh, stomatolog2003 at yahoo.com. Prototype number two coming your way. Nice. Okay. Nice. So last one. Nice I hope, way. I hope, I hope all these emails are appropriate, yeah, right? Yeah, right? <laughs> oh my God. You know you're scared. I never even thought of that. <laughs> Wouldn't be very gentry if it was a, a dirty email. Yeah. And who's the winner? Prototype number three. Oh. Sajid. Matasim at gmail.com. Right on. Congratulations. Congratulations, People. guys. Nice. All right, congrats. Nice. The prototypes are chosen. I will email you on Monday at the latest, let you know how we're going to go about getting them to you. Okay, guys? So, yeah. uh, cheers. Everybody have fun. Ciao, ciao. Bye now. <laughs> Yeah, well, thank you, thank you hey, for coming in. Always a pleasure. Yeah. We had a lot of fun. Yeah, we'll have to do this again. We just have a great time. Yeah, that's and, what uh, it's all about. And we love watches, yeah, right? absolutely, absolutely. Okay, guys, well, thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, we will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao. Ciao. This is a public service reminder for the good gentry. Please follow us on Instagram, join the Facebook UGWC group and click on the bell to keep notified of new videos. Don't forget to keep it positive, keep it gentry, onwards and upwards. Thank you.